Yeah. Okay, so a few weeks ago, someone in the comments asked me this question. In DaVinci Resolve 18, I always put the CST Rec 709 node as the first node. Am I doing it wrong? And I replied that I would make a quick video about it, but then I forgot. I'm so sorry. So yeah, a little bit late, but here it is. I'm gonna show you where to put the CST node when color grading in DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> So a CST node is a color space transform node. And if you don't know what a color space transform is, I'll link my last video on cinematic color grading in the description. If you already feel a little bit lost now, go watch that one first. But real quick, what does a CST or color space transform do? And if you know already, just skip this part, of course. So if you shoot a video in a log profile, S-log or C-log, your footage will look like this, flat, like poop. You want it to look normal first before you start color grading. You want to bring that flat log footage into the Rec. 709 color space so that it has contrast and saturation. Now, you could do that manually, mess with the curves and the log wheels, but there's an easier way in DaVinci Resolve and that's the color space transform. So this is my log footage and then here in the effects library look for the color space transform, drop it on a node. And then here, input color space and gamma, you look for the color space and gamma that you're using on your camera. For me, it was sgamma3.cine and slog3. I shot this with my Sony a7S III. And then output, my timeline is already set to Rec. 709 in the project settings, so I can just leave it to use timeline. But you can also set this to Rec. 709 and gamma 2.4 or Rec. 709A. And now you can see it, the footage looks like normal footage that you can start color grading. But the question now is, where do you put that color space transform node? The first node or the last node? And I think it's easier if I just show you. So here's another example. This is the color space transform node. And first let's add a node before the CST. And you can see that the highlights are clipped here and the shadows crushed. So, you know, I want to bring back that information in the highlights and the shadows. And I can do that real quick by using the curves, for example, raise the shadows here, and see in the waveform, all that information is still there. And I can bring it back because the log footage has all that information. Also in the highlights, it's there. But now let's delete that node and add a node after the color space transform. And let's do the same raise the shadows, try to bring back that information. And see, it's all crushed here, it's a flat line. Also the highlights, all clipped. All that information that was there is gone. So that's why it's best to put the Rec. 709 color space transform at the end and do your color grading before the color space transform. Now, sometimes it's okay to add another node after the color space transform. Sharpening, for example, I always put my sharpening node after the Rec. 709 node. I actually don't know if that's the best way to do it, but I always do it like that. If someone knows, let me know in the comments. And that's it. Short video, it's Sunday. I'm gonna enjoy my Sunday now. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.